HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Fletcher Tilton, Attorneys at Law, serving Central Massachusetts and beyond with responsive solutions. Integrity, leadership, and excellence, Fletcher Tilton. And by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk, to keep you up to date with everything you need to know about Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we stopped by Greyhound friends and talked to some students from Boston University who are spending their spring break volunteering. Director Louise Coleman also gave an update on what is happening at Greyhound Friends, and middle school assistant principal Mary Ellen Grady talks about a program designed to help students achieve their goals. But first, after much research and surveying, the Board of Selectmen decided not to look further into pursuing a merger of the Hopkinton and Ashland Fire Departments. Town Manager Norman Kamalu explains. The Selectmen went into this project three, four years ago with a clear objective of researching the topic. Mm -hmm. And um, they did not have a predetermined outcome and therefore the decision they made last week was not to stop the measure but to report on the outcome of the investigation into collaborating and merging the fire departments with Ash Ashland. From my understanding here is what the selectmen uh, concluded from the research and the investigation into the topic. Number one, that there are great opportunities for Hopkinton and Ashland to continue working together as they have done over the years. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, collaborating on developing standard operating procedures for the simple reason that for each call that goes into Hopkinton Fire Department and the Ashland Fire Department, uh, there is a simultaneous call uh, to the other town. And thus you have firemen from Ashland and Hopkinton responding to the same fire and medical incidents. It is in that regard that I think the selectmen are really excited about continuing the opportunity to look into standardizing the operating procedures. Secondly, the study also identified opportunities for collaborating uh, with regard to capital purchases. Each town has its own capital program and I think going forward you will see a concerted effort between the two towns in better understanding how they can share their resources in purchasing large capital projects uh, or vehicles. And also finally there is a great deal of collaboration between the two departments in terms of training, specialized training, tech dive teams, uh, hazmat teams, and I think you'll hear the selectmen encouraging the, the fire chief here in, Hop, uh, in Hopkinton uh, to continue looking into opportunities to collaborate on training with the Ashland Fire Department. And so, on one hand, they did identify opportunities that the two towns can continue looking into opportunities to, to work together. Uh, they also realized that by the end of the day, uh, the study identified staffing gaps and both towns, I believe, are comfortable looking into how they can address the staffing gaps individually. And I believe that summarizes the, the decision that was made by the board last week. At the last Board of Selectmen meeting, the Selectmen talked about the results from researching the possible Hopkinton-Ashland Fire Department merger 
and received an update on Legacy Farms from Roy McDowell. I think this was a worthy study. The Board of Selectmen agreed that exploring a potential merger between the Hopkinton and Ashland Fire Department was a good study, but based on the reaction at public forums and the general feeling towards the plan in both towns, that the plan for collaboration should go no further. We were looking into it as a money-saving measure where we could maintain our current level of service or get better services for equal or lesser money. Uh, you know, the deeper and deeper we got into this, you know, I started hearing people coming away from meetings saying, well, you know, we're not looking into this, you know, to save money. And I'm like, well, what are you talking about? <laughs> we are, you know, I mean, we, of course, public safety was uh, paramount, but the reason we were looking into this was to save money. The more information we got, it didn't seem like that was really going to pan out, uh, or there was some pretty great risk at it you know, kind of a, being a break-even or costing more. Uh, it seemed like we were going to be adding management layers uh, as well as putting uh, a lot more boots on the ground when you combine both, both departments together. And it just didn't seem like um, it was going to be anything that we couldn't accomplish on our own for equal or lesser money. Uh, so as we, as we go through this, uh, you know, I think, again, it was a worthwhile effort. Um, I'm glad we did it. Uh, you know, to you know, there were there were a lot of critics in the beginning who thought that we were going to go into this and then just try to jam it down uh, everybody's throats and make it happen. Uh, you know, I think that you know, this is a great example of something where we actually are going out there. We're you know we're studying it and you know we find that no, it's not something that that uh, we want to pursue. And at this point, it's time to try to unwind it all. Roy McDowell of Legacy Farms gave an update on development adding to the 730-acre site. I wanted to give you an update in our uh, process of attempting to go to town meeting this spring for a 180 units of age-restricted in place of 200,000 square feet of commercial space on the north side of Legacy Farms, uh, just beyond uh, Rafferty Road. Uh, over the last couple of months, we've gone to the Zoning Advisory Committee, spent some time there, and got approval to move forward to the Planning Board. And uh, we've spent uh, a number of meetings at the Planning Board. Uh, I will say so far, I think we've gotten a very positive response from the Planning Board. I believe they're meeting again on March 23rd. We're hoping to get a positive vote out of the Planning Board to go to town meeting at that time. And I just wanted to give you that update hoping to secure the support of the selectmen going forward to town meeting. If the project gets approval at town meeting as part of the host community agreement, approximately $1.8 million would go to the town. Part of 360000 of that would be going to the fire department, various life safety issues in town, and $1,500,000 would be going toward downtown improvements and uh, towards expanding the trail system throughout Hopkinton. Now, the, these are choices that were made, I believe, by the selectmen. However, we'd be giving you the money to use at your discretion. And uh, I think, as you know, we tried to do this last year, and I think we need to do a better job, frankly, this year of outreach to the neighbors and the community as a whole and getting a much better understanding with people so they're very clear and cognizant of everything we're trying to do in all the positive attributes. Of course, the funding of the million five is something new and was not there last year, and I think that's also another positive attribute. As part of further developments set to take place at Legacy Farms, Roy mentioned building on the North Road could start by April 1st, and the planned completion date is Thanksgiving. The goal is to probably start as soon as the snow is gone, so we're projecting, depending on whether, next two or three weeks. Wow. So we'll have significant activity out there by the 1st of April. And the, the goal is to get the road completed by Thanksgiving, or substantially completed by then. The Board of Selectmen also approved the 2016 town budget for town meeting. You can catch the encore of the Selectmen meeting airing on HCAM or online at hcam.tv slash government hyphen meetings. Speaking of government meetings, the annual town meeting is less than two months away. Town manager Norman Kamalu filled us in on what will be going on at Town Hall to prepare for the big week.
This is a very busy time for us here at Town Hall. We are looking at approximately, you know, between 65 and 70 articles coming before town meeting. Uh, specifically, here's what we're going to be doing. Uh, finalizing the town meeting warrant uh, for the Board of Selectmen's signature. And thereafter, we will work with the different town departments, proponents of the articles, to finalize the motions document. Our goal is to have every document that is required at town meeting ready at least 10 days before town meeting, which brings me to my second uh, responsibility. Our office will be working very hard to make sure that every piece of information that goes along with each article coming before town meeting is available on the town web. Um, we will work with the proponents, uh, the IT department, to make sure that, that that information is posted on the town web. Also, it is our responsibility here at Town Hall as staff support to different town boards to make sure that the boards are ready for town meeting. Uh, one thing that I really enjoy at town meeting is simply sitting back and watching the town board members move articles forward, answer questions. And so we'll be working uh, collaboratively with the town boards, committees, and other proponents of articles to make sure that they are ready for town meeting. Uh, finally, we will also be working with the IT department to make sure that the, the technology uh, will be ready and available for townspeople to utilize during town meeting itself. Uh, we do a great deal of work with the town moderator, making sure also that he's prepared for the meeting uh, and that we provide him the information that he requires to make the town meeting run smoothly. Uh, and obviously that entails working with the town clerk's office as well as with town council's office. Simple message. I ask the residents to familiarize themselves with the town meeting warrant, gain a better understanding as to the list of the articles that will be discussed at town meeting, who the proponents are, and then based on that, attend the public meetings that have been scheduled to discuss those articles. Most importantly, residents can call the town manager's office with any questions regarding town meeting. For the latest information on the annual town meeting, check the town's website, hopkingtonma.gov, and our website, hcam.tv. A few weeks ago on HCAM News, middle school assistant principal Mary Ellen Grady announced that she will be running the Boston Marathon on behalf of the Sky's the Limit Middle School Courtyard Project. She mentioned her goal is to raise $5,000 for the project, and this helped inspire a school-wide program to encourage students to reach their goals before the Boston Marathon. Assistant Principal Mary Ellen Grady explains. So we have this program that each child in the school, each adult in the school, from the custodian to the lunch ladies to the administrative assistants to the assistant principals to the principal are writing their goal. We have giant post-it paper, so um, the, the pink ones are for the teachers because we have less staff than we do kids, of course, and everyone is writing a goal. So they're writing a goal that is it's, a, it's attainable. It's um, something that can be reached by April 20th, but you reach a little high, so we higher than, than you think you can. And for me, that would be raising $5,000 uh, through my running and also um, being able to do the training to reach that day. Um, so everybody's goal is going to be posted in the school. We're going to plaster the walls with them. So when the kids, um, some some teams are taking a little bit longer. They needed more than a day, you know, just a, like the, a 20 minute period to write their goals because they're being very thoughtful about it. Um, we're going to have them up. So Mrs. Ben Benick and I are going to be here over February vacation on Wednesday and we're going to put it, all of the ones that we have around the school until everybody is accounted for in the school and everybody's goal is posted. And what I asked the kids yesterday, like what really helps me um, is if you ask me about it and how I'm doing, I, you know, it, I, I want to ask them about their goals and I want to know how they're doing and what they're doing um, to reach the goal. What are their strategies? Um, what, it, what are their ups and downs? Because of course there's going to be good and bad days for all of us. Snowstorm doesn't sound like a good day for me. Um, you know, and, and certainly there's been days that have been wonderful that you feel like you can go forever. Um, and I think 
that that will be the same as, as the kids. And it's really to teach the idea of perseverance and to be resilient individuals. And, you know, uh, um, this year, is, it's a special year for me because it's, first of all, the passion of my the marathon, which I love. And it's also the passion of creating this space for the our community. It's more than just the children here. It's first for the children here, but it's, it's really for the extended community to use. On Tuesday, March 24th, be part of a live studio audience at our HCAM studios on 77 Main Street. At 7 p.m., Hopkinton Middle School science teacher Cameron Hustis discusses her extracurricular clubs and talks about the geek culture. Then Cheryl Peralt, host of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry, will talk about finding her love of poetry. That's Tuesday, March 24th, 7 p.m., right here at the HCAM studios. Book your seat to be part of the audience by calling 508-435-7887 or email stage at hcam.tv. A lot more ahead on HCAM News. We will be right back after a quick break. Hi, we are the girls from Girl Scout Troop 72969 from Hopkinton. We would like to thank Mr. Trojan for the awesome tour of the HCAM studio. If you are interested in fun and adventurous field trips, we recommend, one, to join a Girl Scout Troop. And two, visiting HCAM to see how local television is created and produced. We also want to give a shout out to Kalala Supermarket to thank Dale for our Girl Scout Troop tour. And for always giving us a space to set up our cookie booth. Welcome back to HCAM News. A number of Boston University students are spending their spring break volunteering at various locations throughout the country. A handful of volunteers from Boston University chose to help out Greyhound friends in Hopkinton. A handful of Boston University students are spending their spring break volunteering. The students helped shovel paths and clean up at Greyhound Friends on Saddle Hill Road. Um, my name is Gemma. Um, I'm a junior in the College of Arts and Sciences at BU, um, Boston University. And we're both coordinating um, an alternative uh, service break trip this spring break. And right now we're doing some shoveling um, at the Greyhound Rescue in Hopkinton, um, trying to make sure that the dogs have pathways to walk around at. My name is Ryan DeSasso. I'm a freshman in the College of General Studies at BU. Um, I'm Gemma's co-coordinator for the ASB Boston trip. Um, we're basically just trying to spread the message that animals kind of need a voice and there are people who help animals who need some help giving them a voice. So that's kind of our job here. How'd this uh, program get started here and how'd you decide to come to uh, Greyhound Friends in Hopkinton? So the Boston trip got added a couple years ago. Um, BU does trips all around the country and Puerto Rico. So currently there are a bunch of BU students out all over the country in those big white vans driving cross country, which is fun, um, doing different service trips. So I think it got started a couple years ago because they realized they wanted to give back to the Boston community. Um, it's a lot more of an affordable trip as well. So it's kind of like the perfect option. How did you uh, first hear about this program and get involved? So um, there's a lot of resources online and BU kind of uh, spreads the message as a part of ASB. It's a, a part of our job to kind of spread the word and get people interested in doing some community service and giving back. So that's just kind of spreading the word. Yeah, it's, it's a, the uh, Boston University has a, their community service center, and so within that center there's a bunch of different programs, um, different things like tutoring children in the Boston area, um, different things like that. I work with people who um, um, with disabilities, so this is just one of the programs that we have that's kind of like a one-time event through the year. Okay, and now how often uh, throughout the year will you guys uh, do something like this? So a couple years ago, I actually did the after-school program, which is tutoring um, children in Jamaica Plain. So most people in the community service center do at least um, like one or two things. There's also this program called the First Year Student Outreach Project, um, which is for freshmen. They come back to BU early and they do community service around Boston for the week before classes start. So a lot of people will be staff leaders for that and they'll lead their freshmen around Boston and do service. So what are some of the things you're going to have you doing here today? So we're going to be shoveling, which you guys can see. Um, that'll be, it's really fun getting our exercise in. And then um, I think other people are doing yard work around the area, just trying to get rid of all the snow so the dogs can, you know, have their space to run around, which is obviously crucial to an animal like the Greyhound. You guys are doing a great job. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. Greyhound Friends depends heavily on volunteers. I mean, for special projects like this, you know, when after the uh, snow finally is subsiding 
that uh, it helps a lot to have the BU students here to uh, shovel paths for the dogs so that they can really go out and walk some more. But also they're, uh, you know, they're helping with other kinds of just cleaning and just getting things in better order after such an arduous winter. Uh, so yeah, we definitely are very appreciative and uh, you know, it's great for them to uh, spend their vacation time. It's, it's, you know, it's really encouraging to see young people and people doing that. And so yeah, we are very, very grateful that uh, this group is here, but we have ongoing volunteer opportunities too if anybody wants to come. and. You know, there's always the, the basic help with the dogs. Um, I think about it as being sort of like housekeeping. But, uh, you know, taking them out, cleaning things up, washing bowls, washing uh, drinking pails, that kind of thing. Um, we also look for people who help with uh, computer work, like helping with the database, helping with uh, maintaining the website. So it doesn't have to be physical sorts of things. Uh, we have a volunteer coordinator. Uh, her name's Kathy Lundgren. We can always call the kennel, 435-5969, uh, or visit our website, greyhound.org, and uh, we'd uh, love to have people here. All the snow has made it a tough winter throughout the region. Greyhound Friends has had many obstacles of their own, including frozen gates, employees needing to stay overnight to take care of the dogs, and of course, a lot of snow cleanup. Director Louise Coleman gave HCAM News an update on how Greyhound Friends has fared throughout the copious amount of snow that fell this winter. Well, it has been a terrible winter for, for helping, for working here. Um, I mean, because like we usually come in here at like 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning for the first turnout. And when it's been cold and awful, like all the gates are frozen. Mm. So you have to get a hammer before you can let anybody out and hammer the locks open so that the dogs can go out. Uh, we've been able to let them out in the fenced-in areas. I mean, they just run around and make their own paths. But it's still, like, it's really, when it's cold, I mean, it's been so horrible. Um, the dogs don't want to go out. They, they go out, they run back in. But uh, no, it's just, it just makes everything, all the usual practicalities of life, much more difficult. Uh, we've been lucky to eat that um, we have two staff, young staff members that think it's sort of an adventure to stay overnight. So when it's really bad and we're worried we can't get back in in the morning, they stay over. And so uh, that is a huge relief. So nobody has to worry about trying to get in here. Uh, we have, uh, you know, a very uh, reliable snowplow person. So, so that's a big help. Volunteers have helped with dog food drives to make sure we have food stockpiles so we don't have to worry about that either. Um, Earlier this year, we had a bequest that uh, made it possible for us to get a generator, so so that's a huge relief. But but all in all, it's it sort of diverts energy that could be used for something else, but you know just to survive, just to keep things happening. But uh, you know the dogs are all safe, warm, happy, and uh, we just keep uh, plugging along. Well, today's weather must make up for oh it. Oh my God, today is gorgeous. Today is uh, yeah, today is uh, definitely hopeful. Coming up at 5 p.m. Tuesday, April 7th, Hopkinton Police Chief Edward Lee and Hopkinton Fire Chief Ken Clark will be live on HCAM taking your questions. You can email questions ahead of time to chiefslog at hcam.tv. For more about programming coming up on the HCAM channels, here is our promotions coordinator, Courtney, with our HCAM Insider. Hello, everyone and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. Tonight at 8 p.m., Mary Ellen Grady joins the Hopkinton Coffee Break hosts to discuss the Sky's the Limit Courtyard Project. I came back from the conference and I was talking to the principal, Alan Keller, um, and I had talked to principals before about this and, you know, it was like, no, Got you no can't do that. that's impossible. And he said, go for it. Do whatever you want. Try, try and see if you can get this going. The Board of Health meeting from March 16th will air on Sunday, March 22nd at 10 a.m. as our meeting of the week. At 11 a.m., learn about the enrollment number increase and the upcoming ESBC Public Forum, an ESBC update. On Monday, March 23rd at 7 p.m., audience members are in the spotlight in Wake Up and Smell the Poetry as they share their original works. I'll throw words onto paper like Hurricane Bob stung me with sand when I wanted to see what it was like to be on a beach during high winds. The Elementary School Building Committee is holding their next meeting on Tuesday, March 24th at 6.30 p.m., live on HCAM-TV. 
On Wednesday, March 25th at 11 a.m., learn what Hopkinton's finest and bravest do for the community in our new show, The Chief's Log. You have people are mobile on the street, uh, people are uh, in the center, in the firehouse there, and uh, so more often than not, a lot of times your people are first in, and they're trained in the use of that DFib and the CPR and, the, and those first aid skills that can really make a difference to assist an individual or a family when they need that help. At 12.30 p.m., James Ward shares little-known facts about the town common in the common uncommon. In Business Matters at 8.30 p.m., Kathy McLeod talks about her progression from teacher to superintendent. I thought, oh, this is an opportunity to have an influence beyond my own classroom, to have potentially an influence on a whole building of learners. On Thursday, March 26th at 8.30 p.m., Jim Palana shares his original music in Studio Session Live. Well, a great Lord Byron rode in the street in a fancy carriage with golden leaf. With his serving girls and his serving men, his name in the paper wherever he went. In a new Meet Your Neighbor on Friday, March 27th at 9 p.m., Kathy McDonald shares the ways that she helps people around the world. The point of having the store was that we would use all the money that we made to make a difference to people in severe need. So that was always the, the reason for the store, the re reason for Alima's Purse. On Sunday, March 29th at 10 a.m., the planning board meeting from March 23rd will air. On HCAM Ed, hear last year's Boston Marathon winner speak his inspirational words to the students at HMS. Remember that if you would like to have the HKIM Insider delivered to you every week, you just have to send me an email at Courtney at HKIM.TV. Also, please pass it along to a friend and help us grow. As always, thanks for watching HKIM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will wrap up this edition of HKIM News. Be sure to check our website, HKIM.TV, or find us on Facebook and Twitter to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton, including upcoming local events. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care and be well.